Hi, it's Gadget UK here again, back with another 500 board. Well, it's a 500 plus. You can see it's got a battery uh, on here at the moment. Now, all around here, can you see copper? I think someone's had to go at cleaning this up and put a new battery on, uh, so <laughs> I would not do that. So I'm going to remove that, first of all. There's a bit of greeniness here, so it's not very good lighting in here at the moment. It might be a bit lighter in the morning when I pick up the, the remainder of this uh, video but we'll get that battery off first thing and then just have a, a clean around there with some vinegar and a bit of a scrub with the uh, fiberglass pen it's not too bad this one we may just need to set that off we may need to remove this socket it does look like this socket here has been replaced and that's the clue can you see it's a bit fluxy here it's, it looks okay though the solder points are good the strange thing is there's a cap across here what's that all about I don't remember seeing a 500 plus with a, a cap there before so that is a wee bit strange uh, obviously it's missing all the chips so I'll borrow the chips from one of the other boards and I've got uh, an 8375 spare that we can use to test this. Other than that it looks okay though. So anyway let's uh, let's get that battery off. So I'll just add a little bit of uh, solder to each of those battery contacts actually. may seem counterintuitive but it's got flux in there so that's the main thing. You could just add some dedicated uh, flux. Right, so temperature has also increased here. Maybe best to just pull the battery through actually, let's just try. Oh, there we go, most of that's come off. But uh, I suspect we're just going to need to pull it through because that is not completely free. Same on that side. So, uh, yeah, I think we'll just pull it off. Well, that side freed up. Let's just try adding a little bit more solder there. You can see it's got a fixed wire there, so someone at some point may have had this work, you know, they may have, uh, you know, replaced, oop, replaced that uh, trace. There we go. That side out. And that side's out. There we go. Battery off. So we'll clean around there with a little bit of uh, vinegar. It's just uh, white vinegar. I'm not sure what that green is. Oh, I think someone's put a bit of solder mask paint or something over there. Look. I'm going to go uh, around here as well. We'll use the toothbrush on it in a minute because there's some of the greeniness around the pins on that. Well, two minutes and I did two things and it works. So I've switched that off. I will admit, the first time I powered it on, it's got a black screen. It wasn't doing what it was doing uh, previously. I'm not even sure that I showed you. It was getting like a pink, like a really weird pink or very weird blue screen, and then the video would just go. You'd just lose everything, like the sink had gone. And that was what it was doing yesterday. So, of course, you know, I inspected around here. I did spend 15 minutes just measuring connectivity here. Everything's there, apart from one connection to the expansion here that I need to patch in a minute. There's no issues here at all. I was just about to get, well, I did connect logic probe up, powered it on. But before that, I did two things. The first one, I think I showed you, there was capacitor under here. I thought, well, let's just remove that, that's crazy. I don't think that should be there. And then the second thing I did is, I don't think you can tell now, there's solder here and solder there. This resistor here, one thing I noticed is that there was like a circle around the connection on both sides where there was no solder on this side. So it was very obvious to me straight away, hang on a minute, that's been swapped. So I flipped the board over and the solder points were terrible on these two points here. And then something dawned on me, I thought, hang on a minute, I remember now, this is a 47 ohm resistor that feeds the video circuit over here, including Denise. I wonder if it's these bad connections, so I just resoldered them. I didn't even measure the voltage or anything there. If, I reckon if I had done, somewhere down here, I think, I'm going to be up, up here, the VCC, I think, would have been low here. This was why we were getting strange colours. It was actually booting up, I think, or low. It may have been crashing because of... Uh, you know the CPU, try uh, sorry CPU trying to interact with Denise and going hang on a minute, something weird going on with Denise here. You know, giving a Denise error. That might be the, some of the colours we saw, but it wasn't outputting properly and the video was going. And I think it was a result of this area here not being powered properly. So I reflowed the two connections here, connected everything back up, black screen. And that was consistent, powered it off and on several times, black screen. I thought, well, we've got that further. It's not crashing like it was doing. It's not losing the video. So I just literally pressed all the chips down into the sockets. There was a bit of chip creep on one or two. Powered it on straight away. No worries. 
boot diagram ran through now it does fail the memory test right at the very end but i think that that's normal when you've only got one meg on these boards it's, it expects two i think i don't know why maybe it's because it's got this agnes i've got no idea we'll test it in a minute more thoroughly obviously i need to fix the expansion and then stick an expansion in there test it with a full two meg range but i then test it with logica that passed all the tests no problems including the ram Put kickstart in and you've just seen it works. So I think it's just now a clean up, uh, clean up and finish off really. We need to clean up here, you know, tin these traces, get a bit of solder mask or uh, nail polish or something on here. There is a little bit of soldering need, needs to be done here because, you know, like the, the connections on this cap here, they're terrible. I think I would take that cap off, clean up the legs on it, clean up the pads, tin up the pads and reconnect the cap there or replace the cap, one of the two. And obviously fix the one connection to the expansion port. I'll do that next, I think, and we'll test the, uh, the expansion ram. And then just to clean up, there is some green paint or something on here. I'll show you in a sec. It's strange how it's got there. I think it was a bit of solder mask paint because there was a bit of green paint here, wasn't there? The sides of these look a bit green and it's not corrosion, it's actually green paint. You can see it actually on the PCB as well. And this here is green. <laughs> it's really weird, I don't know. It's almost like someone's mask stuff on. And the group is that, that's green. Green paint on there. I think it's a bit of solder mask paint, but it looks like spray. I wonder if someone sprayed it. It's bizarre. They must have like masked off, but not masked off here. And this green spray has got on there. It's, it's mysterious to say the least. It is a bit strange, some of the things that have happened to this, to be honest, because look at these caps here. That's the other thing I thought. Those look small. Those look like these here. That's a 470. Now, there's a chance that's factory, and Commodore just used whatever they had in the component bin. <laughs> Maybe they were out of 1,000 microfarads, I don't know. But as I said previously, I would stick 3,300s here, if I'm honest. So I'll probably do that in a minute, I think. Or, at the very least, replace these with 1,000s, because the 470s and the are too weedy the really weedy caps to have there it's really strange they're definitely supposed to have at least 1000s here so let's get some uh, flux on here I think and uh, I'll start to tin up these traces we may as well tin this stuff up as well do you know while we're here you do tend to need quite a lot of heat when you try to do this stuff if you're not careful you'll get the braid stuck to it and of course I cleaned around there with your vinegar, cleaned around there with IPA, it's a, a couple of scrubs with the fiberglass uh, pen. So there's one wire underneath that somebody else has uh, previously put on there, it could have been William. Um, so yeah, it's not too bad at all this one. Not too bad at all. Let's just get that fan on. So I'll get the ZX Kim fan on here actually, just because I really don't want to breathe in all those fumes. Of course, just by virtue of doing this, you could actually damage a trace that's literally barely connected there, but yeah, it's better to do this than not, that is for sure. Solder's probably not going to bite around here because of the corrosion, but it may do with a little bit of friction in the braid. This is all just one large ground area, or it might be VCC, I'm not sure. So if it doesn't all cover properly, it's not a big deal. We can just get some solder uh, mask on there or something and it's going to be fine. So after the first pass, cleaned up with the uh, IPA there, just giving it another scrub with a fiberglass pen. You can see it's looking a bit coppery still around here now. But more of the corrosion has come off just by those couple of things I've just done. Right, so the board still looks a mess, but as you can see, it's tested the full 2 meg using an expansion there and that's okay yeah so as I say <laughs> it looks a mess I plugged all the wires around here plugged all the wires around here turned up these traces uh, put two fine coil wires I'll show you them in a minute you can't even see them from there on the two traces I could have rooted them on the underside but uh, yeah other than a clean up now with some IPA and a toothbrush and then putting some solder mask over there it's okay it is uh, gonna live to see another day this one the one thing I will point out is the first thing I got was a black screen again. It was booting, but it was just a black screen. The power LED was not doing anything just other than being on. 
uh, and I, I took the ROM out, put this in, and it works straight away. I think it's the ROM socket, because if I just take this out, I can probably almost, yeah, I can't quite pull that out like that with round pins. But if I just take this out and put a uh, normal dip chip in there, you will see it's really slack, the socket. Look at that, I can just literally pull it out with my fingers, look. So that's the problem with that. That socket does need replacing. It's because it's had round pins in. This is the problem. You know, that's reasonably tight fit. But it powers up every time that way, so uh, I'm confident that that's all it is. That's the last problem. Can you see there's a bit of noise on the display as well? The display is not as clear as I would expect for a 500 plus. That could just be it needs the main 1000 microphone caps replacing, perhaps. Yeah, it's just like a wee bit noisy compared to the other boards. And you can see that, there's like a bit of noise coming across the display. That is weird. It could be that power supply that's nearby, let's just unplug that. In case it's that, because I've got something else plugged in here. Yeah, I still see a bit of noise there. I think I've got rid of that noise actually. I think it was my extractor fan. Yeah, it was. It's only a 12 volt, you know, a cheap Chinese PSU, but yeah, the noise is gone there now. So that's what it was. <laughs> it's not even plugged into the same socket. That goes to show how much noise that thing's putting out. So these are the two solder points. Can you see that looks really weird colour of grey? I think it's the type of solder that's been used there. Uh, I'm just going to remove the solder and uh, add some flux and reflow these. This is that resistor that feeds the power to uh, Denise and that area of the PCB, you know, the DAC and stuff. But we'll just get some fresh solder on there. Uh, because that was, I'm convinced that was the uh, the main problem with this. It could be that the pad has lifted a bit here, I don't know. Anyway, let's just uh, let's reflow that with some fresh solder and flux. Let's give it time to flow through to the other side. I will toothbrush around here as well after because there's quite a lot of board needs toothbrushing. Yeah, so it does look a mess on this side. The reason being is let's say all this surface area here is kind of either disintegrated or so corroded you can't even solder onto it. Scratching it seems to make no difference. Um, the first wire is on that trace there and comes down to, uh, I can't see it now, there I think, yeah there. Uh, and then the other one is from this end of this cap here again you can't see it and it comes to that trace there so it's so fine that it's like hair or well, it's thinner than hair actually um, so I'm going to toothbrush this but then I think we'll get some uh, nail polish on I've got some solder mask paint but I'm just going to use nail polish I'll show you the solder mask is like really dark green the solder mask is a bit lighter it, neither of them are going to match really uh, but the nail polish is just easier to, to put on there in my honest opinion You see that green? <laughs> That's paint. There is some paint around here. And you can see what I'm in here. Can you see that? That's green. Yeah, that is not corrosion. Trust me, that is not corrosion. That is uh, paint. I think someone sprayed it, actually. I think someone masked a load of things off and then sprayed it. Look. <laughs> it's, it's weird, isn't it? You can see it better there, look. It's coming off. How strange is that? Yeah, I mean, technically, there's nothing wrong with using a bit of paint there. You could do that. You could mask mask it off and spray over that area. It's going to look a lot tidier than it will do when I blob some uh, nail polish on in a minute. But, uh, yeah, but anyway, that's, uh, that's looking all right now, I think. I will just go over the pins here because there's some of that green paint on there as well, look. Yeah, looking very clean there now, I think. Right, the bit you've been dreading, where I just like make a mess of this now with the uh, nail polish all over the blooming thing. I'm just going to put some straight over those connections there. Start with them right up against that uh, point on that cap. I want it pretty blobby around there because, yeah, I want to protect those wires. Uh, we'll leave those traces exposed, I think, just 
there and just try and cover this mess in the middle. So yeah, that looks a mess, but it'll do the job. So I'll just clean up on the underside now. You can see, look, that's been reflowed, that cap there, hasn't it? It's got some awful looking flux on it. It could have even been recapped or partially recapped this. The legs kind of look like that, don't they? Yeah, that's looking so much better. It's been on test for about five hours and it's still going strong. Yeah, so months and months and months later, we are in the uh, new environment here. So yeah, the uh, area here, as you'll see in a, a later uh, video, one, one or two that are coming up actually, I start to use some solder mask paint. And it can look better, you know, because you get, you know, an uneven surface. But yeah, hopefully you can tell, you know, I cleaned the cotton bud, the traces here a little bit, just so that those traces are still uh, exposed. Um, but you just look a bit of a mess, there's a hair there, look. Um, yeah, this has been recapped, I think. Um, it kindly came from William this board um, but these Panasonics, these caps back here the Panasonics uh, they're only 1000s though so when I was like oh I think they're all 470s, that's a 470 I think um, in fact that one's a 1000 as well so yeah I think that's supposed to be a 470 but this is the thing you see Commodore did change things by the time they came to the 500 plus and you do tend to get 1000s about there instead of the 3300s but the Panasonics and it, it does look you know looking at the solder points it looks like it has been recapped so you know what uh, this is why I didn't swap the caps on this it's been recapped but it's not bad is it it's actually come up in a really good condition you know if you look down the side here this is all green before uh, these were green before and it wasn't corrosion it was the, the solder mask paint so yeah, it's pretty good that I've got dual wipe sockets everywhere. The one thing I haven't done, as I mentioned, you know, the socket here, the connections are widened there. So at some point, uh, perhaps in another video, I'll um, re-socket that. But this board does work perfectly. And the solder points up here are nice and clean on that. That's actually R405. I wasn't sure earlier in the video which one that was, because there's two, isn't there? There's one that goes to the 12 volt side of the AV, and one just goes to the, I don't know, the 5 volt AV side of things you can tell which one it is I'm not sure if it's the one that goes to the hybrid or elsewhere on the video side here you know and these are what buffer the RGB signals into the um, DAC here the hybrid and on the underside round Agnes really clean there's a little mark there can you see that this board has uh, you know like I said been sat around in storage in an ESD bag for a number of months so yeah there's just the odd mark like that that I think I'll just clean off Yeah, I think that's some sort of heat mark, actually, if you look at that. It's not flux, is it? It's like it's been affected by hot air or something. There's like a strange appearance to the surface there. Yeah, but overall, the underneath that board is pretty good. Uh, yeah, you could argue this fixed wire that um, I presume William put on there is a wee bit long. You know, it could just be shorn from point to point. So the way I'm going to do this is just to simply pull the wire up here. I'm going to try and see which, where it's soldered to. I think it's that blob there, isn't it? Yeah, heat that blob. Yeah, pull the wire off. Just pull it uh, down to approximately where it needs to be and trim it. Like that. We'll just add a little bit of solder and flux to the iron as we heat the end here. It may melt back. Yeah, I think it's that kind of wire where you actually need to strip it because it ain't uh, rolling back. But this is why I give it a slight bit of extra length as well. Just pull the end like that. Tin it again. This is where magnification can help because I can't see what I'm doing if I'm honest. So add a bit more fresh solder onto that point there. Pull our wire into position. And obviously if you've got quite a long extended bit of wire, just make sure it's, there's no chance of it short into anything nearby. But Anyway, you can see that it's a bit shorter and a bit tidier. So this next board I'm about to show you, it was using the CIA board ages back and I never fully tested it. Um, and straight away I noticed that the machine was not booting at all. And at that point I put Diagram in and Diagram would boot, Kickstart wouldn't. Yeah, but anyway, it's marked uh, fixed 2021, uh, seal and parallel okay. Um, yeah, so 
yeah, very, very pleased. That's a nice board to have in the collection, I think. So just testing the CIA I haven't used yet. You can see on this R6, it's just given a black screen, nothing else. So by a little bit of logical deduction, uh, just measuring the pins basically, so I've got a good working CIA here. Looked at the pin out, measured the PA and PB pins initially. Um, no issues there. Well, there's a slight difference on one or two of them, but uh, in terms of pull down or the pull up, I think they're pull up resistors actually, weak pull ups. Uh, the only thing I could find difference is between ground and VCC, this chip has got about 13 or 1400 ohms. Yeah, this one here is in the region of mega ohms. So there is a short somewhere. I was like, oh, so where's the short? So I went around all the remaining pins, got to this top pin here, ARQ pin, 500 ohms between VCC and that pin. So it may not have failed completely. I think what's happened here is it's maybe not pulling low as much as it should do, or it's pulling low all the time. Mind you, you wouldn't think so because it's short to VCC. Well, not short, but there's 500 ohm resistance to VCC. But anyway, it wouldn't boot with this chip in at all, but lifting the IRQ pin out, if I switch it on, you'll see it's booted up. So that is the issue. That is absolutely the issue. What is strange is how Diagram says it's okay in terms of IRQs. So that's totally normal now. With the IRQ disconnected, it's totally normal. You can actually hear the floppy drive as well. So obviously the ports and everything is working. It's just an IRQ problem. So I might scope that next actually um, and just see what we see. Is it like kind of pulling up but not going high enough? Because you know what, I might be able to artificially pull it up with a resistor, or if it's not pulling down low enough, uh, you know, it's like high and then going like that instead of down to the ground, I might be able to pull it down a little bit. It's uh, it's worth it, just see if I can save it maybe. Right, so I'll show you the IRQ on the odd CIA. Uh, hang on a minute, yeah, so you can see it's like up here, yeah, but there was a bit of bobbing around there. It's not moving now, look. A little bit and then if I probe the pin that's not working that's hanging out with the chip here can you see that move it away touch it it moves up a tiny little bit tiny little bit so I think it's been pulled to ground perhaps too hard it's not going high though is it it's not going high so that would constantly be raising an IRQ which is weird because how does diagram say ah oh, IRQs are all right there's no issues that's the thing I'm not having a, an easy time understanding, to be honest. So I'll do that again, pull it off, you see it's there, touch it, goes up a little bit. See that? As I'm just tapping it here, it's going up and down a little bit. Barely anything though, millivolts. See the problem is here though, it's got a 500 ohm resistance to VCC. So if I try and pull it up, <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna be interesting, isn't it? Uh, I might just try. I don't know, a 2K2 or a 1K resistor, and just see what difference that makes. So the level is behaving the same way when it's in the board there. So, you know, this is the ground level, it goes, it goes like that, moves up a tiny little bit, like, I don't know, 50 millivolts. It's like a tiny little up, you know, pulse. It's, uh, it's strange, isn't it? Because it's 500 ohms to VCC, so you would think, oh, it's gonna be stuck high, but it's not. It's like stuck low but this 500 ohms to VCC and it doesn't get warm. So how does that work? That is very strange. One thought I did have, you know, what could you do if you've got a problem with say a pull up, let's say that is a pull up, let's say there's the problem with it, mind you, if it was a problem with the internal pull up and it reduced, you'd expect it to be pulled high. So the transistor there is probably faulty, but let's say that was the issue. The, the, the pull up is the issue. This reduced in size is, you know, almost a sure. What could you do? Well, there are some dodgy techniques <laughs> that you could do to, 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 to maybe solve a problem like that. It may not work, but you're in a situation where the chip's balked anyway. So what you could do is you could connect a supply up to the VCC pin, do not connect ground, and then on the pin over here that's got the lower resistance than it should have, you know, assuming the resistor is uh, almost a short, you know, it's reduced in, in resistance, you could short to ground. Um, obviously the current limits your supply, you could in theory burn the resistor out on the inside. There's two ways that could go, it could either end up a short, but it could just burn out completely so that it's not there. 
you've then got no resistor. Now, that's assuming that the transistors and things connected to that have survived, because obviously you're feeding this pin, there may be diodes and things inside, so you may end up just killing it totally. But sometimes things like that can actually work. I have done that in the past. I have successfully burned out a pull-up resistor and then added an external pull-up resistor. Is that gonna be possible here? I don't think so, because it's not, there's a few things there that are making me think that's not actually the issue. I think it's all about the transistor that's failed, but maybe it's more than one thing. Because we've got 500 ohms to VCC, which would lead you to think that this would be high, not struggling to go from low. So maybe it's two issues. So a 330 ohm resistor to 5 volts to pull it nearer to 5 volts actually, because even though there's 500 ohms there, it's right down here, isn't it? And if you think about it, that's bound to work. So watch, that's booted. Of course, the question remains, is it gonna be able to pull to ground now? We need to scope it, really. Now, it's not booting from floppy there. You can see we've got a red screen there. Could kill something doing this. Yeah, it's like it starts to boot and then it doesn't. So, nothing's getting warm here, but yeah, the IRQ pin is balked, isn't it? I mean, you could argue that maybe the level is not good enough there. I could scope it next. Let's do that. Yeah, yellow screen, so it's kind of a bit intermittent. So you can see, look, we've got a high level there now. Yeah, I think the opposite is happening now, isn't it? Now it's not pulling low. We've got such a low resistance to VCC, it's not able to go low now. Which is why it fails to boot. Let's just remove that resistor. Test it without it again. Yeah, so we can't do anything with that. Totally balked IRQ pin. So I haven't given up uh, experimenting, well learning about this actually. I think the reason diagram works is because interrupts are disabled. Although we're talking about CPU interrupts here. But nevertheless, that is the issue. So what I'm going to do is just going to bend this pin out again. It may break off, I don't care to be honest because it's beyond. Stick it back in to make sure that's booting with that pin out. And it is, but it starts to boot. And obviously without an RQ, it's failing to boot. So let's just uh, reset that. Now the interesting thing is, with the experimentations I've just been doing on that, the resistance changed from 500 ohms to 1700 ohms, which is more normal, but I don't think there should be any resistance there actually. Normal in respect to the I.O. pins. But anyway, you can see that's booting, so I'm going to swap the ROM over, I'm going to put Diagram in, and uh, I just want to just see what behaves normally in Diagram and what doesn't. It's going to boot, I think it's going to boot alright, because as I say, I think the way Diagram is configured, or written, it disables the interrupts. So look, there you go, that's booting okay. I'm just curious is will it fail the ARQ tests? You think it should do. Um, so the mouse is working up there. So let's do ARQ tests. Yeah, this is the thing you see. But you see, these are CPU IRQs, aren't they? Oh, hang on. Oh yeah, that one's just a custom one, that last one. So those passed all right, let's do CIAs. And this is the thing, isn't it? There's obviously a, a, a lack, something lacking in the diagram here, in terms of, you know, the IRQ pin is not even connected at the moment. Yet all this stuff checks out fine. <laughs> this is the thing, isn't it? Now, because that's on the floppy drive interface at the moment, um, well, the side that services the floppy drive, that's primarily perhaps where the problem is occurring here. It's when that CIA wants to raise an interrupt with Paula. I think, you know, to pass some data over, I, I think that's what the issue is. But let's just do serial parallel ports. Where's that gone? Port tests. Because you kind of expect one of these maybe to fail. Because I think, isn't serial or parallel handled by one of those? Or is it the odd CIA? It could be the odd one. Might be an idea for me to swap these two chips around actually and then do this test. Yeah, look, seal parallel is fine there. So, mm, it may not even boot. Well, I don't know. Let's try and swap the CIAs around and I'll re redo that test actually. Right, so the swap's around. Let's power it back on again. Yeah, so it's booting again. So the one with the missing IRQ is now the odd CIA. 
So everything's still working with the mouse. Let's again do. Uh, let's do the same thing. Let's go. RQs. All okay. CIAs. Ah. Ah. This is a difference here. Look. So when you've got the IRQ missing when it's in that slot there, it's a problem. I oh, know it's not. You've got to click to start it. And I thought as much because you know what, I swapped these around this way and tested with Diagram before, but that was when the pin was already in there. And I couldn't see any problems or anything. Everything would pass. Uh, anyway, we've done that one. I don't know I'm doing it again. So let's do Serial Parallel. Again, maybe the IRQs are just not used on Serial Parallel. So look, Parallel Port's all right. Serial Port. So, I don't know, it's bizarre, isn't it? It's like Serial and Parallel Port's work. It's just an issue when it's on the floppy drive side. I'm wondering now, with that pin lifted, what the implications are if we boot it with Kickstart, actually. It might actually boot again, but then that RQ missing, is it going to be, what's it going to be used for? Timers, maybe? Maybe that's the issue here, but then how is it past the timing tests in here? This is the thing that's confusing me. Let's drop to Kickstart, let's just try it with Kickstart. And of course, these are int 2 and int 6, so we're now missing int 6, I think. Are we? I think so. Yeah, so that's uh, accessing the drive, let's stick the disk in. I bet this boots. Ah, it doesn't do. That's interesting. I'll reboot it. Yeah, so you see, without int 2 and int 6, you've got a problem. It could be, though, that it's reading the low there, because that's the pin's not put out pin high now, is it? That's the problem. What we really need to do is feed a high into that pin well where the socket goes I mean so that it's not thinking there's an interrupt you know the way we are configured at the moment it's going to think there's an interrupt all the time from that I see because the pin is not in the socket sorry it's starting to rain uh, I did experiment just uh, pulling the IRQ pin high there just so that it wouldn't think it's already in an interrupt makes no difference so the IRQs from both these chips are super critical in terms of you know kickstart but not on diagram, <laughs> which is weird, isn't it? Diagram's like, ah, I don't care about interrupts. I'm mistaken, actually. It's messed the disk up. I think it's corrupted my sys test disk because I've just tested again here with a pin out, and actually it's booted June, as you can see. So, uh, yeah, it's worth keeping that CIA as a, an odd test CIA. So I will label it up as such, and the fact that the IRQ pin is not working. Well, that is working. Right, it's making sense now. From the parallel port perspective, you can see we have a problem there. The pin 1, which is strobe, and pin 10, which is acknowledge. So that is the problem when you lift the IRQ pin there. Serial is okay. So, yeah, I think that's no major loss in terms of keeping that as a functional CIA for test purposes. Um, and obviously when it's in the other position, the even position, the floppy drive is balked. Now I had to rewrite this disk. It seems that whilst I was testing without that pin there, it seemed to uh, stimulate a write. We had a write sort of a read, I think, and it corrupted the disk. Um, but everything else here is okay. Let's have a look at the timers. There might be an issue here. Yeah, there, look. Fail, fail. So yeah, that is the other problem there. So uh, yeah, it's the time of day as well, obviously, because the IRQ is balked. So yeah, it's good that this is actually showing the problems. That's cool, we've got a tune on there now. Ah, I like that. And of course, you can change that to the old way, tones. It's ages since updated this. I think it was on like a really early version, it's on 1.18 at the moment. There's uh, you know, a lot more sophistication to this, extra tests and things, it's quite cool. So look at the video ones. Yeah, RGB gradients. Very cool. And the other consequence is no keyboard. The mouse works alright. 
So yeah, those are just things to bear in mind <laughs> if you have a balked IRQ on the odd CIA. Just testing those things again with good CIA. Yeah, so our keyboard is working again. That's good. Escape. CIA timers should come back good now. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. All good. And the power port. Yeah, there we go. So uh, there you go. That's what the ARQ is used for on the odd CIA. Yeah, so I ended up just uh, fitting uh, another CIA on here. I used one of the ones that came from Stefan, actually. So huge thanks to Stefan. Um, well, via Analogic. Um, but yeah, this is the board we fixed in 2020, and I just needed a CIA to backfill that. I know the video's not been especially exciting, but I thought it would be useful just to cover some of the different symptoms and things. You know, we saw through the test I did there as I swapped, uh, you know, this uh, chip here, and you can see I labelled it up, IRQX. Yeah, it does work. Yeah, if you just lift the IRQ pin out, it will boot. But the uh, problem there of it just giving a black screen with kickstart confused the heck out of me to start with. Because as I mentioned in a number of the videos in this series, swap your CIAs around. Yeah, and I think I still had a black screen. I'm like, what's going on? And then I put different CIAs in and I realised it was working. So that's why I dug a bit deeper and, you know, Diagram was passing the tests. This is the thing, the version Diagram we're using is probably a pretty old one. So, you know what, it might have, uh, you know, the behaviour there may have been fixed and changed since. But every test they were doing Diagram, you saw we did the serial and power ports. The pin wasn't even connected at that point and the serial and power ports tested out okay. And I think it's just because Diagram just disables interrupts. It doesn't do anything with any interrupt stuff. As far as I could see, maybe the latest version, as I say, may do. But nevertheless, the behaviour there of different things working and not working, you know, like the issues we got with the keyboard and the serial and parallel in the test kit, you know, those things could help you narrow down and go, ah, oh, maybe it's an IRQ problem with CIA or an IRQ problem not getting to Paula, because that's where they go ultimately, Paula. It is the interrupt uh, controller, if you think about it that way on these, you know, it handles the interrupts from various places and raises them with the CPU via the IPL lines, I think. And obviously this is not the board we looked at at the start of the video, but you've got, you know, the resistor there in the 500 plus or on a 500. You know, hopefully the colour screens, and I tried to get the colours matched as near as possible. They were like, you know, instead of being like a, a, a like a cyan, because I think cyan indicates a Denise problem, doesn't it? It was like a really light cyan. And the, the, instead of having a red screen, we had a pink screen. I've never seen a pink screen on one of these before. But anyway, hopefully those uh, things that we looked at there might just help you get some ideas, you know, some hints and tips really to, of where where to look if you get really weird, as I had here with both of these, really weird, unexpected behaviour. Anyway, I do hope you found the video interesting. If you'd like to support the channel, please see the coffee and Patreon links down below. Special thanks to William. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll catch you in the next video.